So do you mean like a coach already has clients and they have this price increase that they want all their clients to come into like by a certain date? Correct. Um, it's more, more geared towards like inflation. So keep keeping up with inflation. So increasing your price to keep up with inflation. Right. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, the thing that I think, I think a lot of trainers don't understand though, is like gas, groceries, just life in general, it's more expensive. And a lot of these coaches, though, as things are getting more expensive, they're they're keeping their prices the same, which means like <laughs> if you make the same amount here and the cost of living goes up, it's like it's going to make it harder to run this full time. So it's like at some point you have to be able to raise your price of your services. If everyone else is doing it, it's like there's no shame in raising your price. Like in every industry I have seen, like yeah. lawn care, everything. The, the price has gone up for everything. doesn't matter what the industry is. So uh, a coach has to be able to increase their price. But I, I know why people don't. It's because they're afraid that if I raise my price, my clients won't follow me. Or if I raise my price, new people that could work with me won't do it because I'm not confident with that price. Mm -hmm. So... That, in my opinion, like the feedback I get from coaches when we talk about price increase, it's that. And they think that, that if I raise my price, my current clients are going to leave because they they don't think they'll be able to afford it. But the reality is they haven't even ever talked to their clients about the new price, about what's included with the new price. So it's, it's more about like packaging up whatever the new offer is, like nice and neat. So the current clients can better understand why it's going to be this much. Um, and even the, the simple fact of just telling your, your customers, yeah, like inflation's happening. Like we're, our price is going up. Like it's okay to just be honest with people. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. nothing, nothing wrong with that. Uh, people get it. Um, mm. I mean, I get emails from, or seen notifications from Netflix. Like they, they've increased their price so much over the past two years. Yes. It's almost exactly. double now what it used to be. And it's like people will continue to pay it if they value it. They're yeah. not going to care. Like people pay $100 a month for Netflix. Like yeah. they're, they're not going to care if Netflix keeps raising the prices. They value it enough, they're going to keep paying. So it's the same way with parents. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts with it? Yeah, I think I, think I agree with you. Um, I think sometimes what coaches, because essentially what it is, it's like, right it's it's repackaging as as you kind of said yeah it's it's not a case of right we keep everything the same but we just increase the price right it's like we change the package and then we increase the price so we add something of value which reflects that price increase yeah um but i think where coaches coaches struggle is that because a lot of them think, right, okay, I've got to raise my price, but I keep everything the same. Yeah. And all the major companies out there, you know, they, they increase their price, but they'll they'll say why they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I look so, at Zoom, for example, like I spend five to six hours per day on Zoom talking to coaches. They... If they raise their price by two hundred dollars per month, I would still pay for it because, like, I look at the updates that they've made over the past, literally the past two weeks, that are like, they save me a ton of time, they make my presentations easier to run, uh, and it's like the the updates that they've made, and they have raised their price for the last two years. It's like it's totally worth it to to keep that product because, like, they make the 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 thing better and. Kind of like we were saying is like, I think coaches are too focused on their current business to where like they don't take a step back and say, how can I make this better? Like, how yeah. can I, how can I have a better product? And oftentimes it's because they're just too busy and they, their, their heads are just so focused on running the training sessions where they don't unplug and say, well, 
how good is this program? Like, what what can I do to make it better? And like, the second someone does that, they can increase the price because like they've actually put some time and thought and energy into. Well, yeah, like if I add this, this, and this, it's gonna be better for my clients. And like, yeah, they should be able to pay more for this because like I'm giving them this value over here that I haven't given them in the past. And mm -hmm. you see it all the time in our accelerator program, like it's pretty normal that coaches increase their price uh, when it's all said and done, because like they're, that's where they finally take a step back and say, all right, like, yeah, if I add this, this, and this, like not only is it going to be better for the customers, but it's like, it's going to be better for the business long-term because now these, these folks are more committed to the process that we have versus just pain per session or whatever the, most coaches are doing right now yeah yeah completely agree so how how do you communicate a price increase to to a to a customer a client a parent how would you approach it yeah i think it's good to know what not to do first because everybody honestly everybody does it this way they'll they'll go on Google docs and they'll draft up this email and it will, the email will look good. It will have the information and then they'll just send it to everyone. And the problem with that is like the average person right now can't focus on anything for more than five seconds. So if you send this long email, even if it's perfect, if you send it to 100 people, I would probably expect 20 to 30 people to actually open the email. Out of that, maybe five people read the whole thing. So the challenging part of that is if you just email everyone, not everyone's going to see it. Most people won't even read it. And now you have a lot of explaining to do to people that open it, that have questions. And then how are you going to get someone to to pay you more money if they don't even know about the update in the first place. So that's most people just do it that way or they, or they go to Instagram and they put this like, like, Hey, we're raising our prices. Like I have seen coaches do that. I mean, it's, I think that's insane to do it that way. Like imagine, imagine if you're my customer and I'm like, like, Hey, tomorrow we're raising our price from $150 per month to 200 per month. And then like on the next story, you see like, Beyonce, it's like, how, how is that getting your attention? And like, you don't know why we're raising the price. So it's like, what, what the heck is this? Like, why, why am I now paying more? So you would have questions about it. Um, so the way people do it is very off. And like mm -hmm. this business, it's, it's, I mean, in my opinion, it's a relationship business. It's like, yeah. you have to be able to actually like take care of your customers and talk to them and tell them what's going on and like lead them. Don't, don't ask them if they want to do it. Like tell them why this is happening and tell them certain date, this upgrade is happening. And like, I mean, we have a whole script on that in the accelerator mm -hmm. program, but like mm -hmm. it has to be delivered either one-on-one -on -one, in person or over a zoom call or a phone call. And I have seen some people literally do that with over 200 people in one week. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. If you're watching this thinking, oh, well, I have 20 people to talk to. Good. Like you have 20 people that are paying you right now. Like take care of your customers and actually yeah. talk to them. So it's like, can't avoid that. It's yeah. got to talk to people. If you send the email or you do the Instagram thing, expect it to not work. Because like I have yet to see anyone who tries to make that transition doing it that way where it's like they've converted all of their clients over the new price. Like it's not going to work that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's... It's, I think it's also a case of knowing your customers. Yeah. Um, which I think a lot of coaches probably they don't know their customers. Mm -hmm. So like, and w when I say knowing your customers, it's like knowing them on a deeper level. Um, because raising your prices can affect people. Obviously, mm. you know, there's the your customers are all going to be at a different financial stage. Mm. So that that could become a massive issue for them, but goes back to what you were saying. It's about communication, right? So mm -hmm. if you communicate it in a way and talk to them, you know, get on that call, speak to them, 
then you can that could be the difference of of them leaving yeah and of them staying because you know something something that you're very good at and i've been working with you for a while is is obviously having different payment options mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so essentially it's not like the customer's paying less right it's just you're spreading out the cost they're still paying what they're supposed to pay mm -hmm. but it's helping them uh with a payment plan right yeah um yeah that's that that's where too like if you let's say you've had a customer for three years and they're on that loyalty package where like they they're still paying less than everyone else and, and you want to tell them about the new price like i feel like a lot of coaches are they're so uncomfortable just telling people how it is and like mm -hmm. if someone is that scared to approach a parent it's like cool well, maybe you still give them the old price but like they have to be more committed like they, they need to sign like a 12-month agreement not this like pay whenever you want type of thing and mm -hmm. um that's where i i think i mean i when i think of the most successful coaches i've ever worked with the one thing that they all do is like when they make a change they just confront it head on like they don't yeah. They don't take forever. They don't dilly dally with parents. They don't text and and send these weird emails that have the updates. It's like they're just very upfront with their customers, yeah. um, and they don't back away from it. And that's that to me is the difference between someone that like is fully committing to make make like a real change in their business versus someone who just kind of wants to do it and they they just want to float by with an email. And I don't know, man. I I see people get penalized when they do things halfway. That's why. Uh, that's why it's like, I would rather you not do it if you're going to do it halfway than, uh, cause like you're going to be better off not doing it versus just trying to do it halfway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it, like yeah. it. Cool. Yeah. Question for you though. Like the, cause I, I think about this probably more than I need to, <laughs> um, but sounds, sounds worrying. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's take the the coach that you know their business has been very stagnant the last two years like yeah. they they have clients they're like let's say they're doing it full time they're busy they're they're always training kids um and you know they have this important change that they're trying to make in their business uh but they've put it off they they've delayed they know what they need to do, but they just won't do it yet. Um, like outside of the strategies that I just talked about, like what, if you're talking to someone on a zoom call and they're like, yeah, like, you know, I, I, I know I need to do this, but like, and they know how to do it, but they just haven't done it yet. Like what, what can you tell that person? That's just, they, they've just been on the fence the whole time. Yeah. And they're still coasting in their business, still doing the same thing that they were doing two years ago how do you get that person to come to grips with finally making the change? It's about c confronting the beast. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, you know, I think, I think at some point it will, if you don't confront it, it will, but it will come back to bite you. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't even have to do be with like, obviously we're talking about business but in, in your personal life as well if there's something that you haven't confronted or, or you haven't changed or you haven't done it's always going to be at the back of your mind right you're always going to be thinking about it right whether that be i don't know following up with a parent or mm -hmm. getting rid of a bad uh, client mm -hmm. right just something that just keeps you keeps keeps you thinking mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you don't confront it, at the end of the day, it's like it's never going to leave you. So it, it is. It's tough. It's tough because I can think of a few examples when well, with my with my business. Um, but you have to you have to prioritize, and I think you do have to, as I said, confront it and take care of it. Because if you don't, then it's just it, it's just going to distract you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and I think sometimes I think what we we do as humans, we always think the worst. 
Um, and I think it's just natural. Like as business owners, we think, right, if, if I say this to a parent, they're going to get angry with me and they're going to leave me. Mm -hmm. Or if I don't address this issue, it's going to get worse or just something like that. And we just expect the worst of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I, just, I don't know. I don't know if it's how we are now in society where everything's so exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Um, but some, you know, sometimes things that you've been putting off when you confront them, you realize, you know what, that wasn't as bad <laughs> right. as I was making it out in my head. Right. Normally how it is. Yeah. It's like once you do it, you're like, man, why, why didn't I do that two years ago? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all mental, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny. So this happened, uh, what's today, Wednesday? This happened on Friday. And my approach now with with people that are like, yeah, like, this is just one example, but it's like, yeah, yeah. I, I know I need to get a, set up a membership for my clients, but I just uh, I just haven't done it yet. And it's too complicated. Like, there, there's all these objections. You know, we, I know we had another chat like maybe a year ago about this, like why people don't do that. And there's a million reasons why people don't. And it's not that they don't know how to do it. It's they just haven't done it yet. Yeah. And what I always do now, I, I always, I look to have a, a uncomfortable conversation with the coach and, and I say, okay, cool. Here's how many clients you're working with right now. Here's how much money you made last month. And here's how much money you lost last month because you don't have this set up the way it should be. Yeah. And then, and then I project that out over 12 months and I'm like, well, here's how much money you're losing over the next year, unless you change. Yeah. And then yeah. I always ask people like, well, it's going to be like a hundred thousand dollar loss in your business this year. So like imagine setting a hundred thousand dollars on fire, like, mm -hmm. And showing your wife, like imagine lighting a hundred thousand dollars of your, of your money on fire in front of your wife. Yeah. Like, what would she say? Yeah. And that's where like, then coaches start to realize, well, yeah, this problem is actually a lot bigger than I thought it was. Mm. And if they take action, cool. If they don't like that hundred K it turns into 200 K over two years and 500 K yeah. over five years. So it's like, it, it's not. Oftentimes it's really not like, well, I don't, I just don't know how to set it up. It's, it's more of, yeah, I just, I'm not fully committed to making that change yet. Cause I'm still uncomfortable with the, the mm. fear, like what happens on the other side of this. And I mean, every time I see people make huge change in their business, like they always tell me like, yeah, like, man, I should have done this two years ago. I'm like, <laughs> I yeah, done I it, yeah, like when we talked two yeah. years ago, yeah, you should have done it then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cause some of yeah. these coaches, like I, I've, I've had running conversations with some people for seven years now yeah. that have yet to still like make changes, normal changes that you see coaches make all the time in our program. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That's crazy to me. Cause like, I, I, I don't know if, if, if something's bothering me for five years and I haven't dealt with it yet, uh, to me is like a per I have these personal demons that I need to deal with. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it's like, I just can't imagine dealing with something for that long and not handling it. It's just yeah, in my nature to change yeah. it ASAP. Um, yeah. yeah. F for me, for me, when I have something loom, like just something that I need to do, I get a massive headache. Mm -hmm. When I get that headache, I think to myself, right, I need to address this now. Because yeah. if not, this headache isn't going to go away. Mm -hmm. um, because it's just stress building, isn't it? Yeah. It's stress building and it's stress that you need to get rid of in order to move on. So, mm. so yeah, I think, but again, it, it, it's all mental. I think it's all fear or what if this happens? What if? And, you know, usually... A, bit, a, a big one is the the, the whole cash, like yeah. cha changing from cash to to like doing stuff online, mm -hmm. um, where coaches are you know still operate that cash type of model, but they lose so much money every week. But mm -hmm. it's like I know I'm losing it, but I don't want to change. Right. It's in their mind. It's still working because they 
still have some people paying them. Um, yeah. yeah, I always go back to, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I always think of this, um, this happened in 2018. So at that point I was, <laughs> I had this really nice high school. They had this turf field that I used to train from. Uh, that's where I was running my business from at the time. And there was this guy, he was like this speed and agility trainer that was out yeah. there. And the first day that I ever saw him, like he had a ton of kids out there. I was like, wow, this guy's like crushing. Yeah. Uh, they had probably 30 or 40 kids out there. I mean, like they were taking up most of the field and I was on this other side and, <clears throat> and we had our kids that we were training, but I was noticed that they had a ton of kids there. And it was funny because like the next week he had like three kids there. Yeah. And, and I was watching him, like when I was wrapping up my session, I was watching him, like he like picked up his stuff. He walked over to the parking lot and the parents were there to give him money. And in my head, I was laughing because I was like, man, that's what I used to do. And I was like, yeah. well, man, like he just lost a ton of money today. Cause like last week he had all these people this week, he only had three kids. And I was like, you know, let's just say he charged $20 per person. I'm just using that as an example. Like, yeah. cool. Today he made 60 bucks, but like he actually lost 27 <laughs> times 20, which is like, I don't know, close to $600. Like he lost $600 yeah. a day. Cause he doesn't have one simple thing set up in his business. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I didn't go over and tell him, Hey, you need to go do this. But like, I, I was just thinking that and every time I would see him, it's like his numbers would fluctuate. Like there'd sometimes be a lot of kids there. So most of the time be some kids there. And it's like that dude can't like running a business is already stressful in itself. But like that dude can't do this full time because it's not predictable. Yeah. That's yeah, killing him. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, he, I only saw him out there for six months and then, that was it. I can guarantee you that was one of the reasons why he went out of business. And yeah. great trainer, probably way better trainer than I was. Uh, yeah. Just didn't have that little thing that makes a huge difference. Yeah. So what? Why do you think coaches don't change that? Because they, um, like people know, right? People aren't stupid. They know that that doesn't work. Right. right? Any coach out there listening or watching knows that right i'm running my business like that like we're talking i know that i'm losing money i know that i can't do it full time because of the reasons you just said but why do i keep doing it because they think this is what i figured out and i mean i don't care how this comes across because I, I know at this point i know it's true they think that because they're a really good coach that they're going to find a way to succeed. That's false. They, they think if I just focus on how good of a coach I am, like, have you watched field of dreams? Do you know what that is? Yes. Field of dreams. It's yeah. like, if you build it, they will come. That was just like <laughs> a whole part of that movie. And yeah. that's like the worst mentality to have mm. because yeah, you can have a business. That's that's great. Anybody can start a business now. But like knowing how to run the business is very different than knowing how to coach and train kids. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, it sucks to say this out loud, but like if if I take two people and one guy is like a great coach, like awesome, great with kids, um good communicator with parents, good at marketing. Uh, like the sessions are fun. Uh, like he has like the coaching side down, communication down. Yeah. And I take this other person that like not the best coach, like maybe not the best, most entertaining person at their sessions. Uh, maybe they're not even that great at marketing. But if I take the first coach and he doesn't understand business and I take the second coach and he does, that second coach is going to absolutely smash the coach that is really good at coaching because he has his stuff dialed in. Like, yeah. and I've seen this man, like I've, I personally know people in my area that played professional, much better coaches than me. 
Like yeah. when I when I would watch their sessions, I'd be like, dude, I wish I had that like energy, that like just the command of the session. Like like I would look at things and be like, man, like how is this dude not crushing it? Yeah. And it was because like they don't have the business side down. And you could be the best trainer in the world. If you don't understand what you're doing in your business, like mm-hmm. you're going to th- think you can just power through by being a good coach, but like, that's, that's not how business works. Business is not just reward the person that's a good coach. Like, Mm -hmm. and I see too many people skate through and skate by because they rely on how good of a coach they are. And dude, I know people that suck at coaching that are incredible business owners that are making six, seven figures and they know they're not that good at coaching. Like they, they will admit it. Um, mm. And I'll even tell you, like, I, like, if I put my ego to the side, like, I know that when I ran my training program, I was, I was probably, if I had to rank myself, probably like in the top 10 in my area, as far as coaching ability. But like, if I put numbers on, on the table, my academy versus everyone else's academy, like my academy there was a point where my academy had more players than most clubs in my area. Yeah. And yeah. I will tell you, it wasn't because of how great of a coach I was. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm, I'm willing to admit I, I wasn't the best trend in the world. That's just, yeah. but yeah, I think coaches get that confused. They, 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 they think, yeah, I played it pro or I played college and I have this huge Instagram following. So I'm just going to, have a six figure business. And it's like, nah, man, I, you're, you got to understand what you're doing in the business. In my mm-hmm. opinion, first, before, uh, before being a good trainer, like that's, yeah. And, but that's, that's just through a lot, you know, thousands of calls and seeing what people are doing and actually coaching people through this, like mm-hmm. the guys that figure out the business thing, then their coaching becomes more magnified because like they, they, they can help more kids and they yeah. have committed customers, not flaky parents that just call them like their Domino's pizza, <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah. normal. That is right, right now. That's normal. Parents do that. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they order a, a skills coach for a day for an hour, whenever they want. And that's why like there's a huge gap between like 90 percent of all the coaches and 10 percent of like people who are killing it that make yeah. more money than doctors attorneys engineers like and then there's everyone else and it's because yeah. like everyone has that mentality uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but people have to outgrow that or they have to learn it at some point otherwise it's going to be a short career yeah 100 percent. yeah no i i agree and i think it also comes down to how you are in your personal life yeah so how you are in your personal life will depend on how you run your business yeah um so but again it's like okay yeah you played a pro you're a fantastic coach but you know do you have your your business dialed in right systems um are you willing to learn as well right are you coachable are you you gonna try something new that works that yeah. will help you and no man you're spot on like that's why i mean i spend extremely little time on instagram but i mean it's shocking like some of these and i don't want to like hammer people when i say this but it's like some of these coaches are so obsessed with themselves to the point where like yes they can make money in this business, but they're, they're trying to portray this lifestyle of a rich and famous person when in fact, they're not rich. <laughs> uh, they're trying that they, you can look famous on Instagram. Anybody can, I mean, I, I could go, I could go right now and buy a hundred thousand followers for like 20 bucks and have all of those people be bots and, and make it look like I'm the super famous dude. When in reality, I'm just like normal guy. Like, uh, yeah. but that's where like, especially younger coaches I see, they, they fall into this trap of like, 
oh, I need to make money really quickly. And then when they make money, they're just like, they're reckless 